three people and they are given $25,000 of imaginary money where everyone approaches how they invest in sports cards differently. Some are long-term holders, some are, are short-term flippers, some ride whatever's hot and then and then want to offload it as quick as possible. And instead of just talking about what we're investing in and what, what we're doing with our investment strategies, uh, we are going to take $25,000 over the next six months. We invested it into cards. It was a minimum of 10 cards. So uh, you had to at least purchase 10 cards within $25,000. But any of the four major sports, I opened it up to wrestling as well. As long as the value of the card we can track, it was, it was fair game. And what we will do is at the beginning of every single month, we will go in and we'll update the values of the cards that we've invested in. And you can sell the cards on the first of the month for whatever value it is and reinvest that money. And then at the end of six months, or the highest portfolio value overall is going to win a prize. And we're going to talk about that prize. $25,000, minimum 10 cards, all four major sports, also including wrestling and largest valued portfolio at the end of six months wins. Now, one of the major reasons I chose the six month mark is A, I wanna test it out. I wanna see how fun it is. I wanna see how cool it is. See if this kind of thing works well. Is that enough time? Is it not enough time? And we can kind of adjust from there. But B, it also, football's coming into playoffs. Basketball just kicked off. Hockey's about to start up. Baseball starts up in, in April. WrestleMania is coming up in April. It is a really, really fun time to be tracking sports cards uh, over the next six months until summer. And so I think it's a really good uh, opportunity for us to actually put something on paper if you were given that money. And then we are going to actually track it show numerical value and uh, it's always fun to have a little competition too so uh yeah we're, we're definitely going to come up with some sort of uh skin in the game here so but no matter what um we are going this week i will put up on instagram a poll where you can vote for who you think the portfolio that will end up winning at the end of like the it. contest will be and that viewer or those viewers that vote correctly, if you pick the winner, okay, so right from the beginning, you stick with us, you're gonna cheer us on through the contest. At the end of the contest, if you were one of the people that picked that winner, um, we will throw everybody in a hat to draw a name for a, a grand prize, which I haven't come up with yet, but uh, we'll do something cool for the winner. Um, possibly additional prizes, depending on how many people get involved. Uh, but if you pick the winner, so that gives you, the viewer, some skin in the game as well to be cheering on who you think the portfolio that represents maybe your investment strategy, or if you just look at it and go, man, I think that's a really cool portfolio. Whatever the case may be, if you think it has the longevity to possibly win this contest, you could be a winner with us. So just something to keep in mind. That's awesome. No, I, I love that idea, and uh, I, I think that this this keeps uh, this keeps having longer legs here. I, I think that it's going in the right direction. It's gonna be fun for the viewers. It's gonna be fun for us because I myself am uh, competitive, so uh, I am very confident in my investments. I, I feel like I have a good shot at this. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm I'm pretty confident in my investment strategies. So we'll perfect. See. All right. Well, um, I think we covered the rules. Do we want to talk prizes before we un unveil these uh, portfolio? I'm okay with it. I mean, if we unveil my portfolio before we talk prizes, you guys might want to put less on the line. So. Oh no, no, no. I think I think we need to decide this before uh, before unveiling any portfolios. So why don't you why don't you tell Sandlot a little bit about uh, your idea for uh, for a little bit of uh, prize pool for us? Okay, so I love hit drafts. Hit drafts are, are one of my kind of favorite things right now uh, to watch. They're very random. It's kind of gambling at its highest point. But my thought was that somewhere we put into the pot three ways for some cool product. 
we can figure out what that price point's gonna be, whatever everybody's comfortable with. Uh, but we put in for a cool product and basically there are three of us we will do a hit draft on that product at the end of the competition and the finishing order is the order of the draft picks so the person that wins gets first pick and then whoever was second gets second pick and third pick gets third pick uh and so on and so forth until the entire you know product whatever it is that we open is gone um so I really like doing those hit drafts. I thought that was kind of a, a cool way because I've seen enough hit drafts where, you know, first pick ends up being something pretty cool. Uh, so it, it kind of gives the winner good stuff, but everybody kind of everyone gets walks away. Yeah, everyone walks right. Away everybody gets sure. something out of it as well. But, you know, essentially you're you're winning the ability to, to probably walk away with whatever the money is out of it. So I bet um, we can even you, convince uh, Sandlot to uh, come in for a live draft. Yeah, that'd be fun. So if not, we can do it, uh, you know, maybe we can do a three-way Zoom call, yeah. get all three of us on here and, and do it, and we'll break it live. Uh, I'm going to be doing some hit drafts for Magic, the gathering on here as well. Uh, that's kind of a new thing to some of the gaming side of things. So um, I have some other hit drafts that I'm going to be doing where I'm actually going to be having some friends buy spots and doing some hit drafts and stuff. So people will get a chance to witness some of that well before the end of this contest. So they're familiar with what hit drafts are. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so I'm down. We can, uh, we can discuss product later, but I'm definitely down for the uh, hit draft. Cool. Sandlot sounds like he's in. So I'm excited. All right. Who, uh, Aaron, let's do you first. Let's, uh, let's do Ooh. your portfolio first. Instead of saving the best for last, we're going to do the best first. Okay. Uh, line one, 2017 Domus rated rookie PSA 10. Now, is this the optic? Mm, no, it's just the standard rated rookie. Standard Donruss. Okay, so went with flagship Donruss, PSA 10, bottom at $1,200 each, quantity of four. Why, yeah. Patrick? Here's the thing. Patrick Mahomes probably going to win another Super Bowl. Uh, his as soon as Super Bowl is over, he's going to skyrocket in price more than he already is. He's already super hot commodity. I've said it since the beginning when we started this that I think Patrick Mahomes will go down as one of the best quarterbacks in NFL history, whether that be in the the top you know three or whether that is the top one by the end of his career, which has so long uh, to go. With that being the case, and I think the Chiefs are probably the next dynasty, I think not betting on Patrick Mahomes anything right now, right before he possibly goes to win a second Super Bowl and solidify himself as a, you know, he's already a Hall of Famer. Yeah, It's really hard to imagine that, you know, three years in, he's a Hall of Fame candidate already. Um, already has a Super Bowl, pretty much on his way to another Super Bowl, barring a major upset, which could happen, but I doubt it. The Chiefs are really, really that good. Uh, I definitely think that not investing in Patrick Mahomes right now is a bad idea. Uh, I don't want to invest all of my money in Patrick Mahomes, as as you'll see through the portfolio. I, I'm riding the hot train right now. That was my <laughs> goal. I saw, you know, in, in a little bit that I know people think that, oh, well, I'm going to invest in the market as a whole. Like Michael Jordan has gone up X amount, so I'm going to buy into Michael Jordan this or whatever. I'm not doing that because this this is not a long-term investment strategy. This is six months, yeah. and I want the most out of my six months. So I bought into Patrick Mahomes. This is a an affordable buy-in. I think it's a card. It has a pretty high population. I think there's uh, just under 900 of them that are uh, graded as PSA 10s. So See, there's- See, now that's uh, interesting. Real, let, me, let me stop you real quick. That is a really good point. So if you are if you are making a sports card portfolio, I think you're right on there where making sure that you're looking at the population report is a big deal. Like right. I think Trey Young and Luca rookie cards are up over up over 20,000 PSA graded cards. Yeah. Um where some of these, you know, 4 or 5 year old cards of some of these studs, you know, we're talking in the hundreds um so they're just a lot more rare so just just an interesting thing i think i think right. you're dead on there i like that point well and and keep in mind you know and i want to say this because i think it's important to anybody that watches this or goes back and watches this you know i'm a long-term investor yes i'm very different now i i can't speak for sandlot because i i don't know as much about his investing although i i think we see eye to eye on a number of different 
player aspects uh, on a lot of cases. So I'm guessing we have some similar takes. Now we may have invested very differently in this because of the rules of the game, but I do think that there's going to be a little similarity in I ideology, but I'm a long-term investor overall. Right. You know, I buy things and hold them for years to see them mature and sell. And I've done that. I bought a Corvette that way. Um, you can see behind me, I have tons of action. But that's been my life long mission is buying and holding to sell this game is about quick nickels and you know i owned a store for a long time i've run my own business for many years um the the idea in all of this is that you know quick nickels are better than slow dimes that's what this contest is going to be if it's a six month run yeah. and for me i bought in real hype heavy right now and i i diversified you know any one of these teams gets knocked out of the playoffs and immediately you know who i just bought into goes stale uh whether they drop in price i don't know but going into the off season not a good time for that because so, it's hey, so hey aaron real quick let me so yeah give me give me like an overall investment strategy on your portfolio i guess before we go line by line like what was your because i i have i had a certain strategy that i'll kind of go over with mine this is a six month window. It's a big change for me because it's a short term investment window. With that being the case, we're buying and selling on a month to month basis. And I can give away a little bit of my strategy here because we're already in it. The first lists have been made. We're all kind of solidified. I'm looking to basically invest on a month to month run. Okay. I'm not convinced in the big sports card bubble that's going to just hold its inflation values for, you know, big dollar cards and whatever. You know, I understand Michael Jordan rookie not going to drop in price significantly at any point in time. But at the same time, all of the cards that are following suit, like the Lucas and, you know, some of those others that are unproven things, I don't think that that market is going to hold up long term both in my my actual investing and for this game with that being the case because those numbers are something that we're we're working with here all of my investments are a fairly short-term ideology in seeing them mature quickly selling them off either reinvesting or holding my profits and only reinvesting my initial money and we'll see where we go after the first month to see what we do i'm a big fan of making my money work for me instead of the other way around so with that being the case, what I plan on doing is hitting it big pretty quickly, taking that money, seeing if I can make that money, make more money, which is any investor, any investor in anything at all, that's their plan. Right. Uh, I definitely, I'm definitely gonna do that on the short run selling of these as they quickly mature. So as you see this portfolio, it is things that I expect within a 30 to 60 day window to take a big bump up and then I will quickly sell probably most of this portfolio will change by the time we get to, you know, or early next month. So that's the plan. That's the strategy. Gotcha. And you, did, you didn't even spend all your budget, looks like. I did not. I kept uh, kept a few thousand in reserve. I think it's one important to note that you should never spend all of your life savings on it, although I did go pretty heavy in things. But uh, I definitely want to keep a few extra dollars behind because when buying opens again in a month, I want to have some extra capital to invest in maybe some, you know, things for sports that are coming online around that time, NASCAR, some other things that I wasn't confident in buying right now, but I'll be a little more confident as we get closer to that season. Gotcha. Makes sense. Okay. No, I like the strategy. I like the, you definitely tuned it to the game. Um, so you're essentially saying that any one of these cards could be off your table next month. Sure, absolutely. And, and you're looking to, I, I think, I think in in real investment in cards, it is important to always have a number that you're willing to get rid of a card at. Um, what's you know what is my number for a Luka Doncic rookie card? You know, am I looking 200%, 300%? Uh, most of the time, for me, if I hit 300% return on a card, I am flipping it. Because right. I'm going to then go make my money. Uh, I'm going to go invest my money somewhere else where I can think I, where I think I can make another 300%. So, right. uh, yeah. definitely, definitely like the strategy there. So, yeah, I'm interested to see why you picked the names then. 
All right, well, let's do it. Let's get into it. So Patrick Mahomes, we went over that. Patrick Mahomes right now has the best potential of any NFL player, I think, to see an, another jump in his cards. He's not going down in value. I think he's already solidified himself as a Hall of Fame candidate three years into his career. The Chiefs are probably the next dynasty. Uh, I definitely think that Mahomes is a safe bet of everything that I did. We are in a, a literally a month window that the Super Bowl is going to be right after we actually do our selling uh, window for this. So since we will have a window just days before the Super Bowl, I am fully expecting to know which one of my NFL players here are going to be. <laughs> That's super interesting. <laughs> which ones are going to be busts? So Mahomes is my number one. Um, that nice. is that is an affordable budget card. There are not very many of those rookie cards of his left that are graded. I think if you'll notice my portfolio, it's graded down the line for the most part. Uh, I think it's important because that is the currency of yeah. legitimacy in the sports card industry. I don't think base rookie cards that are ungraded uh, are going to keep, I, I don't know. I, I don't think unless you're buying somebody that is unproven and speculating on them becoming proven, I don't think there's any money in buying, you know, a Patrick Mahomes raw base rookie card. And, you know, I just don't think the investment strategy there is going to turn you as many dollars as just going ahead and buying the graded PSA 10 and then selling it when his market blows up after he wins the second Super Bowl in two years, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the strategy yeah. with Mahomes. Aaron Rodgers is the next line item. Uh, that Aaron Rodgers, that's the 2005 oh, you top. Got, you got a Tom Brady next. Oh, did I do Tom Brady next? Okay. Uh, oh yeah, I guess I did do Tom Brady next. So um, that is the Bowman, uh, the Bowman rookie, that's the PSA 10. Um, I did two of these in the portfolio. Um, so this is kind of, it's the Bowman Chrome, um, is or the Bowman base, not the Bowman Chrome. I have to say that specifically because the Bowman Chrome is worth a little bit more. Yeah. I did the Bowman base. Um, it's a really weird time back in the 2000s the early 2000s, 0, 01, 02, Tops kind of had the line on the sports cards. Yeah. The football side of things was really on the Tops side of the window. And because of that, you know, those rookie cards are a little more sought after. Now, the rookie cards that I think are the high dollar ones, like the rookie tickets, of that era, those are the ones that are really valuable. In fact, we were talking about that for Peyton Manning the other day. The rookie tickets are the the rookie card you want to have of the quarterbacks of that era. But when you start talking about the ones that there's more out there and the chance that the you know the layman can invest in, this is the Tom Brady card that I think is sure. achievable and investable. If Tom Brady goes on to win a Super Bowl. OK, and the reason why I only bought two of these cards is I don't think Tampa Bay has a true shot to win the Super Bowl. I do think there's a chance that Tampa Bay could take some momentum and ride it to the NFC championship game, which, you know, depending on how that goes, you know, Tom Brady will still be kind of the talk of the town around that time where we sell again. I fully expect to see, you know, a return on the Tom Brady cards late in the playoffs, barring them getting eliminated on wild card weekend, which I don't think will happen, but uh, it could definitely happen. So with that being the case, I think Tom Brady was a, a pretty safe bet. He's also a pretty safe long-term bet because I don't think he goes down. I don't think I lose no. money at this, even in the cooling. I don't cooling. think you would either. Right. So, so for me, you know, there's really only upside, no downside. Um, the next one is the uh, Aaron Rodgers. This is going to be the PSA 9. Now, the reason why I chose the 9, okay? So this is the Aaron Rodgers rookie card. Uh, it's kind of the standard rookie card. Again, it's not the rookie card, but it's kind of the mass printed rookie card. The reason why this one's important is there's more than 1,600 of these uh, that have been graded in the population report, okay? So it's easily achievable, but the price on that Aaron Rodgers card in the last roughly six weeks has gone way up. I think it's it's gained almost a $300 value. I think 
It was selling for around 450 to 500 just a month and a half ago. Uh, and now it's selling for the 800 mark. So it's almost doubled in value. It's, it's pretty insane how much it's gone up just in, you know, roughly a two month time period. Yeah. So with that being the case, I think that's going to continue because he hasn't been named MVP officially, but I think he's going to get MVP. I think the Packers are a really solid bet to go to the Super Bowl on the NFC side of things. So I think that the Packers could go to the Super Bowl. Uh, that's going to make him go way up if he wins league MVP. They go to the Super Bowl. There's a very good chance he could win Super Bowl MVP, get a second ring. Big, big deal in title town. Bought the Aaron Rodgers rookie, but I bought the nine because the 10... I think the nine is something people will be buying. The 10 is already priced significantly more. I think the nines are, are the where the margin is going to be better. Sure. I think I'm going to gain an extra 20% margin on the nine that I wouldn't gain on the 10 because the 10 is already a fairly astronomical price in comparison to where it was, you know, just six weeks ago. So that's why I went with the nines specifically on that. Um, and then after that, I've got, uh, I'm going to skip the next line item. I'm going to save that for last. Okay. Um, so the next one's the actually line item even after more that. interesting. You, I, I can't believe you went basketball. Well, I, I did go basketball. I wanted to diversify. I think it's important to diversify. I, I think basketball is the hot product in the sports card market. Um, the reason I chose Ben Simmons, um, I went very light in this. I actually wanted to go Tobias Harris. And I, I I thought about it. I almost bought in Tobias Harris and bought a whole bunch of really cheap Tobias Harris cards. I think he's the guy that you can go buy really cheap rookie cards of right now. And I think in a couple of months, he's probably going to be worth some money because I think we're going to be talking about that team going pretty far. Um, with that being said, I went Simmons because he's the safer bet of the two. He's been playing really well this season. Basketball cards are on a massive upswing. I mean, it's just insane how basketball cards are going through the roof. I don't understand why basketball cards are going through the roof. I think it has everything to do with Michael Jordan value. You you have Michael Jordan and LeBron James. I'm not buying into basketball being a long-term investment. I, I don't think it is short of the LeBrons and the Michael Jordans. But I will say this. Um, I do think right now it's a quick investment. I think you can't, unless you just don't do your research, you can't really lose a lot of money on the basketball train uh, because I think the season has started and we're starting to see what players are really made of. Yeah. So that being the case, uh, the reason why I bought in here uh, for Ben Simmons, he's been playing lights out. Uh, I did the silver prism. Prism anything at this point in basketball is worth a fortune apparently. So I did the Silver Prism PSA 10. Um, to me, I was actually gonna do two of these, but I decided I wanted to save my money. Uh, I don't know basketball well enough. I just know that reading all the reports, looking at you know the team doing well, you know this team has a chance to possibly only lose like 15 games this year. Uh, ben Simmons is kind of you know the pilot for that. Uh, I do think Tobias Harris is gonna be the sleeper on that team. Uh, I actually personally bought a, um, a rookie a rated rookie patch auto that actually has the rated rookie patch with the auto on there. I, I got a seller that offered it to me, had it listed for like $60 and um, I've watched Tobias it. Tobias Harris? Yeah, and, and he- uh, Really? Yeah, and he, and he offered it to me for $22, so I took it. So, oh, uh, yeah, dude. It's like number to 50 or something, so. Dude, anything basketball, yeah, it's, it's right. crazy. So I, I was like, yeah, okay, cool. Um, I think Tobias Harris is going to be worthwhile uh, two months from now. I think it'll be one. Anyway, we'll talk about him later because I'll probably buy into Tobias Harris uh, once that team solidifies its way uh, closer to playoffs. And I, I think that'll be a, a name you know. Um, that being said, that's why I bought Ben Simmons. I uh, bought PSA 10. Uh, Prism, I think that's just the card to have, uh, of you know, the base cards. And that's his rookie, obviously. And then the next one that I did, uh, Wayne Gretzky, hockey. Um, that is the I year. I love that two. pick. That's the year two, the 1980. Uh, that's a PSA eight. It's a very achievable card to buy. We are going into hockey season with the sport picking up. 
uh, with this being the hottest rookie class. You know, the Wayne Gretzky, the rookie, is selling for a ridiculous amount of money. Uh, Did you, know, you see um, one, Wayne Gretzky had a his PSA 10 uh, rookie card went for a million dollars this year. 1.1, right? 1.1 yep. million. And that's a really important card because right. we've seen a lot of the big money thrown into the ultra modern cards you know you have a hundred thousand dollar zions and and lucas and and all that but uh it's that that wayne gretzky solidified vintage cards and it's it's just important to have uh, you know the population report on vintage cards are just so much lower than these massive cards that we're seeing uh, sent into PSA now that the the new generation of collector has kind of entered the market. So it's right. really it's just a really important card. That's why I love the pick. I love the Gretzky pick. Yeah, I mean, and it's a PSA eight. Uh, it's an affordable pick. I think that that's where people are going to be buying. I think we're going to see. Um, I think we're going to see people buying into. Fully expect that card and even a PSA eight form to possibly hit the thousand dollar mark within the next couple of months. So now I'm going to go with my two flyer picks. These are my flyers, okay? So I'm buying Michael Thomas. Here's the thing, I'm late on this. I almost didn't do it, but I wanted a really good flyer pick that was in the, the sports world. Um, here's the reason why I bought in Michael Thomas. I needed a Saints on, on this for me personally, because I'm a collector and if I'm not in it, uh, in it to win it with my teams and, and the collecting and the hobby side of it, you know, it loses some value for me. So I needed a Saints player on this. Michael Thomas is the one, here's why. Out of sight, out of mind. He's basically not done anything this year. He's been injured off and on. He was put on IR, not because he really needed to be on IR, but really they just wanted to make sure that whatever the nagging injury was, was all healed up before playoffs. Um, you know, I really wanted to see the Saints get the first round by, which we were playing for. We didn't get that so that our entire team had an extra week to heal up. Now, my favorite flyer. Ah, here we go. I'm glad you opened this to wrestling cards because they are technically trading cards. Becky Lynch, ladies and gentlemen. Becky Lynch, 25 copies, raw. Becky Lynch, rookie card from Topps Undisputed, the autographed base card, okay? The first in line, it's her first card. There are five or six rookies. That is the first card that she ever got. I'm buying them raw, right now autographed. They go for $80 a piece. I bought 25 of them. Blake asked me why. Why, Ann? Why would you buy Becky Lynch right now? Ronda Rousey is coming back after a year a lot, year off, actually more than a year off, really, at this point, okay? Um, it, I guess it's actually going to be almost two years that she's been gone. She lost to Becky Lynch, to Becky Two Belts, the man, Becky Lynch. That's literally what she goes by, the man, Becky Lynch. Okay, Becky Lynch was the hottest superstar in WWE. She was the person that was the most entertaining, like her stuff was gold. She was Becky Two Belts because she held both women's championships for both brands. Okay, she lost one of those titles. So she went to one brand, was fighting for that, in real life, outside of WWE Universe, she is married to the wrestler Seth Rollins, okay? Now they are married. Um, they've been together for a while. She got pregnant, I believe unexpectedly, as champion, and had to surrender her belt because she can't physically perform in the ring. So she literally had to just surrender the belt and give it away. Okay. That was a year ago. Okay. Okay? So... She beat Ronda Rousey, took her belt. Ronda Rousey goes away, hasn't been back in almost two years. Ronda Rousey was one of the biggest names. She was in WWE for one year. It was one of the biggest free agent signings. They paid her a buttload of money to come to the WWE and wrestle after she retired from MMA. She left wrestling because she wanted to do family life. I think they thought she was going to have a baby and stuff. I don't think that really worked out. She's been planning a comeback for a while. They were going to bring her back at WrestleMania last year, but since COVID hit and WrestleMania had no fans and it was such an awkward time, they scrapped that whole idea that she was going to come back and face Becky Lynch last year. So now 
Ronda Rousey, they are WWE. Vince McMahon is determined to have fans in the audience for WrestleMania this year. So that being the case, they are planning as long as fans are able to be in attendance and they can put on the show of shows, the Super Bowl of Wrestling. Becky Lynch versus Ronda Rousey. It's going to be the headline of all wrestling. I'm buying in these rookie cards because Becky Lynch was the entertainment. It's going to be this massive comeback when she comes back. They're going to be the probably headline match of WrestleMania. The WWE hype is going to be huge because Ronda Rousey is going to be all over the news. Becky Lynch rookie cards are going to double in price. That's why I bought this. They're going to double in price, yeah. if not go up even more. I want in on that. I've got 25 of them here, and I might have some in my personal collection. Too. You went big. You went big. No, I like it. I like it. That's that's seeing the opportunity before everyone else does and capitalizing on it. That's the forecast. The man, Becky Lynch. All right. That's my portfolio. I still have, uh, I believe, about uh, $2,500, give or take a few bucks, left over there. So um, I'm going to keep that in my reserve. And at worst case scenario, hope that you guys go completely broke and my $2,500 is all that's left. Yeah, I I got you at $23,462. There we go. There we go. Yeah, yep. Okay. I like it. We'll do mine and then we'll we'll save uh, Sandlot for last. Looking forward to that. Thanks, Sandlot. You know, why do anything if you can't do it with passion? That's right. Hit me, Blake. Right. Let's talk about your list. All right. So let me uh, let me talk strategy first. I put my dollar on the mark. I am four dollars under my twenty-five thousand dollar budget here. So I went in essentially three categories. I went with uh, flyer picks or, or riskier picks. I went with uh, modern guys that I think are going to be Hall of Famers. And then I went with uh, some vintage on my list uh, that I consider extremely safe and kind of holding down the fort, kind of right. building the base on. Yeah. I went basketball, baseball, and football. So hit three of the four major sports. I love the Wayne Gretzky pick. If I did hockey, I would have gone Wayne Gretzky, uh, but did not do didn't do hockey. Now maybe that is a future investment though. Um, so yeah, I I went. I I see the younger guys as definitely the more risky. Uh, they're the unproven uh, quantities, and but I also think that those guys are going to have the most upside. But I definitely invested in them less than I did. Uh, I kind of put the meat and potatoes in my guys that are going to be Hall of Famers uh, that that I think are guaranteed Hall of Famers. So yeah, um, definitely interesting uh, list here. And this this is exactly, I I really do believe that if given the opportunity to invest this kind of money, I really think that this is exactly what I would come up with. I spent a lot of time thinking about this. Um, So, it, it definitely, you know, you, you talked about diversifying. That's exactly what I did here. Um, I'll make sure that this is all nice and pretty by the next time we talk about it. And we're going to have values and stuff like that. Um, this week has been extremely busy, so didn't didn't have time to make it pretty. But I uh, definitely wanted to get the game going. So I'll start taking you through line by line. Uh, I'm going to start off with my flyer guys first. So I might skip around a little bit. Um, Christoph Porzingis. Uh, are you familiar with Kristaps? there uh, Aaron no so Christoph Porzingis is a Dallas Maverick and he is, is that a, a, a soccer team yeah yeah the Dallas Maverick soccer team you got it the soccer club gotcha uh, okay. so he's he's like 7'7 and he shoots three pointers like some of the best three pointers in the league and they call him the unicorn because he can pretty much do anything now he got hurt on the Mavericks in the bubble last year. He tore his meniscus in his knee. And he has started the season on the disabled list, or I don't know what they call it for NBA, but he hasn't he hasn't started playing yet. They're expecting him back here in a week or two. And I think it is 100% out of sight, out of mind purchase here. 
Uh, he is. He's been an all-star. He has dropped 40 points before. He rebounds. He shoots three-pointers. He can literally do everything. And I think if the Dallas Mavericks are going to be competitive in the playoffs, he has to be there. Now, the only thing that holds Kristaps back is he hasn't been able to stay healthy. So, if he stays healthy and if he has the kind of... Um, if he has the kind of year that I think that he can for the Mavericks and the Mavericks make the playoffs this year, I think that buying his PSA 10 at 350 bucks is an absolute steal. I think it's a steal. I think that it could easily double in the next six months. And you're in your real life investments, you're in on Luca, so you're really banking on the Mavs potentially making playoffs. And I only have one other basketball card on my list, and the main reason that is is because you know, we saw it with football. The hype bubble peaks at the beginning of the season. Point. I think I think we're at the peak of the hype bubble right now, and I think it is going to fade over the next couple months unless you're investing in the right player and they go off. And then the sky is the limit, apparently, with basketball cards. Right. So right. that's why I didn't go super heavy on basketball. That's why I just have two on my list. Um, okay, so moving down to another one of my flyers, Bo Bichette. I bought I bought his rookie PSA 10 card. If, if you're investing, one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give you is invest in what you know. And sure. I've, I've been tracking Bo Bichette for over six months now. And I was waiting to buy Bo Bichette in real life when I felt like it hit the bottom. And I got my own personal Boba Shed at 60 bucks. I had to pay 80 <laughs> for this exercise. So it's already headed back up. I probably should have grabbed a couple more in real life. Um, right. But I did grab 10. I think he's a real deal. I think that his name stands out. People love it. Like the, the fact that he was turned into a meme last year. He was throw Bichette and Boba Fett and everything else. I, I think that he's just going to be kind of a fan favorite. And he's, right. I, I think he's the real deal. So, picked me up ten of Boba Shet. Talked about him a lot on the channel. Just like I have the next guy, I'm a big believer in Jordan Alvarez. He won Rookie of the Year previous year. Forty seven dollars for a PSA ten base rookie. Like, <laughs> like what a steal. I went, I went heavy on that. Eight, eight. I, I was at twenty. I had to drop two to fit fit in my uh, third Patrick Mahomes <laughs> down there at the bottom. But uh, oh, you yeah, bought you into Patrick. Too, huh? I did, but I, I went with a different Patrick Mahomes than you. Right. So, uh, yeah. So PSA ten, Jordan Alvarez. I I know Bobachet. I know Jordan Alvarez. Been tracking those guys, and uh, they're the smallest part of my investment. But I do think that there's good money to be made, and that's why I bought um, quite a bit of quantity in those. Yeah. So. Uh, those are my top three guys. That that would definitely be what I consider my riskier of it. Of I'd ask you questions picks. about those, but we've been talking about them on stream for yeah. several weeks now. So I think I know. I think I know all of your reasonings, and I think so does our audience as well. Yeah. So that that ended up being right around five thousand dollars in my portfolio. So I spent about twenty percent on my flyers. Now moving into my guys that I do consider to be Hall of Famers currently playing. Uh, LeBron James tops PSA 10 rookie cards um, back in the bubble these were going for $8,800 and the fact that they've dropped to $4,750 and he's going to chase another ring on probably the best team in the NBA right now I think over the next 6 months there's a good chance that these go back up to eight grand. so grab 2 of those he's you know arguably the best player to ever play basketball. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. The main thing is that we've seen this card be almost double the price that it is. And I, I don't think the basketball cards are gonna slow down. I don't think LeBron, um, you know, barring him get hurt, I don't think that it's kind of like, you know, your Brady take. I don't think that you can lose money on LeBron James when this card was going for almost double what it is right now. Right. Uh, I'm going to skip down. Oh, I'm sorry. I do have one more flyer. Wander Franco talked about him. He's not played a day of baseball in his life. I realize this is the extreme hype uh, of, of my entire list, 
because he's definitely the we haven't seen him on a baseball diamond he hasn't played in a year <laughs> but he's supposed to be as close to can't miss as you can get with a prospect i think that he comes up and i think that when he gets called up in the baseball season this year or as we get closer and we start to hear more about him coming on to the major league team i think that this price is going to go up i i think that it's totally hype generated there's no, i mean other than the fact that he's a complete stud he hasn't played a day of baseball on a major league field yet but i think the hype will drive that that price up that's you know that's again that's why i went pretty heavy on baseball i think that i'm buying in the in the valley of baseball right now i, th I think that instead of going in and investing on football or investing on basketball which i think are kind of I think that football will continue to go down for a couple months and then it's going to build right back up come, you know, right. closer to June. And I think that basketball is at the peak of hype. I think that we're at the valley for baseball. And uh, that's why I went pretty heavy on, on kind of the younger guys for baseball, because I think over the next six months, we're going to see those go up. It'll definitely be something that I'm, I'm watching pretty carefully. Uh, so, uh, went, so went LeBron to Franco. Uh, the other surefire Hall of Famer, I do agree with you. I think Patrick Mahomes is in that category. I think that as a whole, Donner's optic is underrated and undervalued. So I agree with you that Prism is the gold standard, but I think that Donner's optic is not that far behind. And at $1,600 for a PSA 10 for that chrome finish that I think that people really like, I think that optic is a really good value for a Mahomes. It's it's you know you kind of pointed out that you don't have to sell your car to buy one of those, and I think that that's a big reason why uh, the optic is the best purchase for me for a Mahomes. So I, I mean, agree with you. A stimulus, a stimulus check can buy one. Right. Yes. Which matters right now. I mean, yes. I know it's weird to say, but that matters right now. Correct. It, it is worth, well, my, my stimulus check wouldn't, wouldn't cover that, I guess, <laughs> but uh, I have kids, so, you know, I have to right. put food on the table and stuff. What? So, yeah. Stop being responsible and spend all your money on collectibles. Man, maybe I should have. So, um, so yeah, went with Mahomes and, um, it'll be really interesting after this exercise to see if, you know, what crossover names we picked. Because uh, so far, I guess you and I have Mahomes, mm -hmm. and I wonder if Sam went with Mahomes, Mahomes too. Not. Oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. No, you're fine. You're fine. Okay, so so Jerry Rice, I think that this card is crazy undervalued. So I went and looked at the Jerry Rice rookie cards. We're talking about the undisputed best wide receiver of all time. Right. And his his PSA tens. All right, so PSA 10, I'm gonna take PSA 10 off this. But PSA 10 is going for close to $40,000. Let me take PSA 10 off because you can't even see the eight and nine line. It's so far up. <laughs> Great. PSA 10s on those have such a distant margin, especially even in the junk wax area of stuff. Yeah. You know, a PSA 9 is, you know, $40 and a PSA 10 is $200. And I get that that's still a small number, but in comparison, that's that's a big, you know, that's a big jump, so. Yeah, yeah, so that's exactly what I'm talking about here. I, I think when you look at the mindset of vintage card collectors, and you know, I realize it's 86, it might, vintage you think kind of pre-72, but it's pretty close. The difference between, and, and I, I get the 10, there are some people that it needs to be a 10. They need that Jim Mint perfect card. But PSA once you get... Yeah. Sorry, what was that? PSA 10 is going to be the currency, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But once you drop down to the 9 and then you to the 8, I, I think for the mindset of someone collecting these cards, there's not a ton of difference between an 8 and a 9. I think there's a big difference between 9 and a 10. I don't think... For someone out collecting, there's that big a difference between, oh, I got to have a nine as opposed to, oh, I would take an eight. And look at this price difference. 
we're talking twenty four hundred dollars to. I'll show you my eBay because it, it it says it says three fifteen there. Oh, I bought I bought it at three hundred. Yeah, so three fifteen. We're talking twenty one hundred dollars between a nine and a and an eight. There's no way that a card reflects that minuscule of difference between an eight and a nine to make it worth twenty one hundred dollar difference. There's no way. I mean, that's crazy. They're going to catch up. And I realize the population report probably has a lot to do with that. We're talking 11,000 PSA 8s versus only 1,000 9s. Right. But this that's is a cool. massive difference. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking the greatest wide receiver of all time. And well, I mean, and keep in mind, I, I just I saw somebody point out something online that was really important to note. Um, the Michael Jordan rookie card that is PSA 10 the one that's selling for I can't remember what they're selling for what are they selling for 150k 200,000 what are a they PSA at, right? 10 Michael Jordan rookie card yeah uh, like a million okay so there's only a handful of those in existence like sub 100 right. or right at 100 or something of those in existence yeah. okay um it it's very small in comparison to the Luca card, which there's, you know, I, I forget what they said, like sixteen thousand of them or something. Yeah, it's it's over twenty. <laughs> right. So there's only fifty eight Jerry Rice PSA tens. <laughs> right. So that doesn't make a whole lot of difference for a modern card right this moment, but what it does immediately say in a long term investment strategy is the cap it has a much much lower ceiling because there are so many of them yeah. so barring an earthquake where half of them get destroyed and you happen to be on the side of the world that doesn't have an earthquake and get to keep yours um you know you're looking at a much like a luca in 30 years from now that rookie can't be the same price as the michael jordan was in the same time span because there are so many more 20 times more than There's you know 317 jordans psa 10s and you're okay. right there one went for a million i don't know what made that one special but they go for about 200,000 to 240,000 yeah so i mean think about those being you know let's say 200 for for easy math the luca is 50k right now yeah, um, let's let's take a look. I, I'm actually I I want to know the number now because I'm invested in Luca. How many right, Lucas right. are we talking? Uh, we'll, we'll look at the Prism base. Yeah, I, I think that's a a big difference because you you one nobody's ever going to catch up to Jordan, and two I don't think there can like I don't think you can ever say that that card's going to hit that big of a number. Yeah, 15,000 PSA 10s. Right. So 15,000 to 300. So 300 Jordans, and they sell for 150 to 200 on average. And, you know, I, I don't know. I, man, I don't know. It's, it's hard. Like, it's hard for me to get on that train. I get that there's more collectors. I get that there's more money coming in. But if I'm buying and saying I want to be in on a 30-year investment, um, I would rather buy Jordan now, which I'm, I guarantee you is why they're finding it worthwhile to spend 150 k because there aren't going to be very many Jordans get graded PSA 10 between now and 30 years from now. Right. And you invest $150,000 in that Jordan PSA 10 today, 30 years from now, that's probably a million dollar card. Mm -hmm. You know, 150,000 today to retire a millionaire. I mean, not, not terrible in my opinion. You know, yeah. it only gets more rare. It only gets more rare. The thing about Lucas and whatever is, you know, there's so many printed and the hype is already on it. So when the bubble bursts, Michael Jordan still stays high. Luca doesn't stay at anything because there's 16,000 of them graded PSA 10s and the bubble burst, you know, why, why do you need Luca? He's not going to be 
Jordan or LeBron James. Um, I guess. So sorry, we could sorry. Let me do my last him. guy real quick. Um, Sandy Koufax. I think that I think that he is an undervalued. Um, I think he's an undervalued vintage guy. I think that he, uh, Hank Aaron, um, you know, some of these other guys are low pop, like extremely low pop. I went with the PSA six because that's what I could afford. I think the 1955 top set in general is just an awesome tops vintage set. It's got a great look to it. And, you know, I hope this doesn't happen, but if one of these, when these legends do pass away, they get a lot of eyeballs on them and they tend to sell. Like I sold a couple of my dad's Bob Gibson's when he passed away earlier this year, just those vintage hall of fame, greatest of all time pitchers. Uh, they do tend to spike when that happens. And I, I think Sandy Koufax in general is just undervalued. So uh, that's why I chose him. Kevin Blake, I don't have visual because my phone's being used for this. So I don't have visual uh, to the list. So if you will okay. put it on screen for everybody. And then uh, Bryce, if you want to walk us through, man, and tell us I'm super interested. I'm, I'm literally going to be surprised every time you say a name because I can't see the list. So let's do it. All right. Hold on, let me let me pull it up on my end since we're lagging behind. All right, hold on. All right, you Blake, you want me to go? Yep, go ahead, man. I got your top pick. Um, I'm just double checking your pricing. Uh, so yeah, you're uh, two two thousand dollars per uh, Mister, or I'll let you I'll let you spoil it. <laughs> yeah, so that I went with the uh, the James Harden. Uh, right now he's killing it in the NBA. He's hands down the MVP as of like the first like ten games. So you have so, his two thousand and nine tops rookie PSA ten. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's uh, I think his number one card hands down. Um, they were going from fifteen hundred to two grand. So that's why I said I thought the pricing was a little off, but it's all right. I think yeah. that's a good pick. Yep. Um, here, hold on. Let me. Uh, so we got 2,500. Wait, no, that's a SGC. 1750. 1479. Someone got a steal. Uh, yeah, so I'll meet you in the middle at 1750 for that price. All right. Well, we can always adjust it after, you know. Okay. Right, I'm just gonna keep. I'm gonna keep it as you as you put it down, and then we can we can mess with it later. Y'all are gonna scheme against me and fix all this price yeah. and line. I see how it is. I see how it is. <laughs> all right. And we, Blake already talked about it. We, we're gonna split the grand prize. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. It's <laughs> one on two. I will take you both down. Becky Lynch will be my spoiler. <laughs> all right. You want me to go to the next one? Yep, go ahead. All right, so I went with the uh, 2018 base prism of Trey Young, PSA 10. They were going for around, you know, 675 to 8. So Trey Young's hot right now. Uh, I've been looking at his stats. I'm not even a big basketball guy. I, I used to be, but uh, I think – Trey Young is like actually the real deal. I, I didn't buy into him at all, but he is definitely killing it for being just in his like second or third year, you know? So. I like uh, Trey Young. Trey Young is one of the, I think he's one of the best investments to pick a guy. Uh, we see Luca cards go up, and then because Trey Young is associated with Luca being the top two guys out of draft pick when Luca goes up or when Luca gets a lot of hype, Trey Young does too. And I think it's actually working in reverse. I think Trey Young actually has more hype right now. He doesn't he doesn't sell for the same price as Luca. But he definitely has a lot of hype behind him and his his cards I think are way, way up. Um Yeah. Oh yeah. That's no, gonna be that. it, if you if y'all check out his stats, I'm a big stats guy. I do it with baseball all the time. But uh, in basketball, stats are like king. 
Well, right now, James Harden's number one on damn near every category, and he's playing outside of his mind. And then Trey Young's not too far behind, whereas Luka is actually towards like the bottom of the top ten. He's not doing what he was doing last year, the year before, you know. So, I, I not that I don't like Luka, I, I I've invested in him, but I think that you're right. I think that Trey Young is the hype thing right now, but also Trey Young is he's cheap. I think I think he's cheap right now. I think he's going to turn into Luca prices. Um, I'm with Aaron though. I, I'm I'm the kind of guy that I collect for the long term. I never collect for the short term. But if as we're doing this 25k portfolio, I think that um, I definitely think that buying these guys that are hot right now and selling them in like about two or three months for a double my money, I'll take it all day. Right. Absolutely. Quick nickels. Hey, All the quick- so, so Trey uh, Young is up 23% just in the last 30 days. So definitely hot. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. So I went with uh, Trey Young as well again, but the PSA 9. If you look at the graph on market movers, uh, I mean, it, it just, it's going up on both. But the PSA 9s, I think, are a steal. Because I think the tens will hit that Luca mark, and then everybody will buy the nines. Yeah. So that was that. Um, so my first football guy was Josh Allen. Like mm. Aaron said, the, um, the, the Bills are freaking murdering people. And who would have thought the Bills of all people would be killing it? But um, they're the team. They're the team to beat. I think. I, I know I'm hyped on the Chiefs, but. I agree with you. I, I think the Bills have almost as good a chance to go to the Super Bowl as the Chiefs do. I think it's definitely going to be, barring a major upset somewhere, you know, I, I think that that team is got a lot of momentum and a lot of young talent and all the pieces they need. So I like I like that pick. Yeah, see, I, the, another reason why I went with him is because uh, even I think even if Josh Allen – uh, loses like let's say he loses in the AFC Championship to the Chiefs. I think I think that the I think that everybody's going to be like, oh man, this is the next elite guy. He he's one of these younger guys that's going to be the elite guy behind Mahomes. So I think that his card prices will probably stay where they're at. So well, and and he's not losing digs anytime soon. You know, no. it's very important to note the talent around some of those young quarterbacks, like you know Herbert. You know, we can talk all day about Herbert and and being a rookie of the year and blah blah blah. But um, depending on what happens with Keenan Allen, depending on what happens with you know Anthony Lynn, because they're talking about firing the coach of the Chargers. You know, there's a whole lot of things that could happen for Herbert that changes that. Nothing is changing on the Bills roster. Like Diggs yeah. is gonna stay there. Coach gonna stay there. The whole team is gonna stay good going into next year because of that and him having that setup. I think that's a really safe pick, and I think yeah. that that's good if you want to do short term and sell because they go to the Super Bowl and he spikes even more than he already is, or yeah. long term if we get into June, July and we start talking fantasy football and you know the idea that Josh Allen might be a top you know top you know couple of rounds fantasy football pick and you want to sell off then, you know, towards the end of the contest and really bank. I, I think that's a safe pick. I like that. that. That might be my favorite pick of anything anybody's done short of Becky Lynch in this whole contest. <laughs> short of Becky Lynch. <laughs> On y'all's picks and my picks, I, I felt like that Aaron's was damn sure the, the safest. I think Aaron's of all of ours was the safest on everything except for the Becky Lynch. I think that that's, that's your squirrely pick. But I think that yours was the safest. I think Blake was a little less safe. I feel like that at any point, Trey Young or Luca could get hurt and I'm out. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, but, I mean, uh, I, th- I find it funny that we pick some, y'all pick some Hall of Famers and GOATs and then I, towards the bottom, I pick some some guys that are guaranteed Hall of Fame. I just find it funny how we we kind of evened it out. We had we had guys that were our, maybe the next big thing, and then guys that are you know established. You know, 
diversifying absolutely yeah, exactly yeah. Uh, all right so i got the uh, psa luca 10 yep. prism he went luca <laughs> yeah. i mean he's he is what he is so i don't know if that thing will move that much more unless he just blows up and has like a 50 point game oh i think it will i think it's gonna move yeah. i i think if they make the playoffs they uh I, I think that his cards shoot up. I, I also if he if we go half the season and he's top three in the MVP running, it's gonna shoot up. Oh so, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't if judge Luca right now. I, MVP, yeah. Sorry, what was that, Aaron? I said if he's in the top five running halfway through the season, he's gonna shoot up. Like doesn't doesn't matter if he gets there, you know, at any point in time he's just mentioned in the consideration for that, whether he be top three or top five or whatever. I yeah. think his cards shoot up again because, I mean, he's already got an established hype behind it. So it doesn't take much to kind of just push it over the edge. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think uh, once Porzingis comes back, the, the Mavericks will kind of look like they did last year in the bubble. And I think that Luke is going to pop off. Yeah, I think Bazinga, uh, the unicorn, I think if he's down there in the post, I think Luca is open out on the outside for making 30, 40 points a game. So, mm-hmm. yeah. All right, so I went with uh, Kevin Durant's rookie top space PSA 9 because the 10s are just outrageous right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of hype but on Durant. It is hype on Durant because he came off that injury. But then again, I think people are going to realize who the hell Kevin Durant was because he's this seven foot guy that just balls out and can shoot from anywhere. Right. And uh, on his stats right now, his stats are telling me that he's killing it. So I went with him. That's a safe uh, bet. I mean, Durant could have been one of the best of all time if he had stayed healthy for a lot of his career. I mean, that that was one of the only things that I think plagued Durant a lot was he, he had some injuries along the way that kept him out of that. But, I mean, he, he absolutely if, – if he does not make it there – I think he is a very close shoe in to potentially be one of the best basketball players of all time. Not, I'm not saying like Jordan LeBron, but you know, like we think, you know, Kobe and some of those players, you know, Dwayne Wade and whatever. I definitely think he's in that, you know, uh, top players of all time category, uh, regardless. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Um, all right. So, um, the next one I went with, uh, all these I did, I think except for the Trey Young and the Boba Shet, I went with three on each one of them just to be safe. Um, I went with Russell Wilson's Prism. Um, nice. It's kind of at a steal for a PSA 10. Yes. And I mean, I, I don't know if I put him in the you know top 10 all time, but if he wins another sure. Super Bowl, my God, you got to at least put him up, up in that talking. I, I I think he's top ten all time. I think you're right. I think I think you're safe to put him there. Um, I will say that it, it was really hard to go with Aaron Rodgers over Russell Wilson because I like Russell Wilson far more than I like Aaron Rodgers. I'll just but wait till his I, next pick. Well, and, and and yeah, but I I just want to say like I think Russell Wilson. The only reason why Russell Wilson is low right now, nobody thinks Seattle has a chance to go to the Super Bowl because of how bad their defense has played. Um, yes. And and honestly, their offense has shown flashes of kind of this shoddy craftsmanship, so to speak. I mean, they're they're great. Yep. They, they ball out and they put up a billion points with DK Metcalf and Russell Wilson. But here's the thing, their first round opponent is the Rams. And those are always really gritty. Like everybody in that division plays each other in gritty field goal oriented games. Um, and the Rams defense is good. The Seahawks is not. I believe the Seahawks beat the Rams both times this season, right? I, I think barely. I think so. Yeah, and, and it's really hard to beat a team three times. And um, obviously it matters whether Jared Goff comes back or not because I don't think a backup quarterback beats the Seahawks regardless. But um, yeah. But man, I like I like that pick. I don't know. Maybe I need to trade my list with Bryce here. I, I like his list so far. So all right, he's got going. a good list. Sorry. I like it. I like it a lot. I'm scared. So uh, then I went with uh, A. A. Ron base. A. A. Ron. PSA ten. Got three of those. Uh, I don't. I'm like you. 
I don't really care for the guy. I, I hate when they talk about him being like one of the top five ever. Uh, he only won one Super Bowl, frankly. And I mean, he's, he's a great quarterback. I think, honest to God, I think the one thing I'll say good about him is I think that he, he has one of the pretty, he has one of the prettiest throws ever. Oh, yeah. The way he throws the ball is so nice and it's right there and he's super smart. I just frankly don't like the guy. What's the, what's the program? What's the next gen stats or whatever? They they were analyzing Aaron Rodgers' Hail Mary because you know how he had that one season where he had like six Hail Marys, like over he had 40 six yards. in today's game, by the way. So, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but I'm talking like the game ending. Like everyone jumps up in the air, Hail Marys, and right. it's the angle of his Hail Mary adds to the to the value or to the to the chances of the receiver coming down with it in the end zone. Like I don't know. It's crazy. The guy's the guy rips my heart on every time the Cowboys play him, so Yeah. Well I, I agree with Blake on that. Um I would actually probably say that in all of all of, all of football, he if there's like five seconds that I got. He, I got to have a guy that throws the ball 50 yards, and maybe someone catches it. I'm probably gonna throw Aaron Rodgers in that. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know any other quarterback that is that clutch in the last like 10 seconds of the damn game. He the king lazy. of the three play. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. I I also put that to him being lucky as crap, but you know, <laughs> that's um, just the Packer way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, so the last one, I'm kind of with Blake. Um, I personally am not investing in Bobochet. I do have some of his cards just out of packs. Uh, I think Bobochet is the real deal. I think that he will be in the pros for at least a couple of years. Um, I think that there's too many guys on the Blue Jays team to show him out, potentially. I mean, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., he had kind of a slump this past year. But the thing about Vladdy is, is Vladdy basically, uh, I don't remember who it was. It might have been his dad or it might have been someone on the team. They basically said, you know, you're going to eat yourself out of this league if you don't get serious. So he dropped 30 pounds this offseason. And he apparently, he's looking really good, apparently. Like, he's still hitting mammoth bombs. I think Vladdy Jr. might be the real deal this year. I think he might show out. That's interesting. Uh, but I, think, I think Bo Bichette is going to be a key player on that team. And uh, I think his cards are pretty cheap for what you can get them. Oh, I do too. I, I think that everyone forgot about him because he got hurt. <laughs> Becky Lynch is going to come through for you, huh? Hey, you know what? I'm telling you, in in April, y'all are going to be you know laughing at me now. But in April, when she headlines WrestleMania and that rookie card is three hundred dollars, and I just take took twenty five eighty dollar cards and uh, turned them into three times what I spent on them, more than three times what I spent on them. Just saying, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed it. It's been good. Oh, yeah. I'm glad we got you on, Bryce. I'm glad you got to jump in and actually, uh, you know, put a voice to to the name so that all of our viewers can know who Sandlot is. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Cool. Well, uh, just to wrap things up, uh, I will say this on the stream and also make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel because yeah. that's where we're going to have those breaks. Yep. Yep. Going to put a link in the chat. And we'll be back tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. right here. We'll see so you there. You can, we're going to come back with our 2021 goals. 2021 goals. That's right. It's been fun, everybody. Bryce, yep. it was a pleasure. Blake. We'll see you tomorrow, man. Good night.